32 fridges by generic ye trees are wooded creatures giants in deep thought that are stubborn against even the ruthless winds i wandered past them confused and trying to find where the fridges were a few years ago i had met someone near my house who claimed they had received a special task that has led them to me i asked them what they meant but they only told me to find where the fridges were find them and make sure they are there during that time I was going back to my house that's only a few blocks away and found the same guy asleep at my door. He looked up and his gaze seemed to sharpen as he stared at me. He spoke as if he were reprimanding me for something I did wrong, your own fridge, do you really believe it is what I invoke when speaking about the fridges? No. The fridges you must find are waiting. I thought I knew you better. And then as if he sensed I no longer wanted to chat, the man simply walked to my neighbor's house and opened the door, letting himself in. I had considered calling the police, but only a few moments later, I saw the man and my neighbor come out of the house while conversing, and they seemed to greatly enjoy it. My neighbor went back inside, and the man was left standing there, holding a small card in his hand like a feeble dove. Why aren't you like the others? This man, he understood what I meant, yet you cannot. Spoke he to my worried face, you find them, and then you will see. Inside is the key, huddled within the sea of your destiny. Find the fridges, and you will understand. The man then turned away, and peeled his clothes off slowly. His jacket fell to the floor in a wet puddle and vanished, soon his other clothes did as well, dissolving too quick for the mind to register. He would not look at me, but I thought I knew what expression he wore, one of calmness, for not one second did he flinch or twitch his body, he'd truly gone still. His body slowly turned as pale as a bedridden ghost, and then paler still like shine moonstone, and then he had faded away, dissolving into the air like his clothes until no trace remained. Well no trace of him that is. The card he'd been holding, you see, had not vaporized unlike the rest of him, and now sat there on the neighbor's porch, innocent and waiting for someone to open it. I had to open it, for I felt the key lay there inside that card, somehow in words or perhaps a symbol, it didn't matter as long as I knew where the fridges were. I opened it and I knew where they were almost instantly, simply because of the old message my friend used to leave me whenever both of us were stuck at home and grounded. It was to entertain both of us, and to provide us with solace during those times of deep, deep, childhood misunderstandings. It was a joke about religion, something that my friend actually came up with that really cracked him and I up for hours. Now it guided me, a second mind above my own, thinking for every action I commit and every problem I encountered. It brought me away from my home and to the local cemetery where a minister, a man's name I'd forgotten, but now remembered because of the joke, his grave is here, laying still and his body entombed. He was buried years ago, when I had been away from town with my family. It was a small grave that was fit for a minister like him, small and modest, but with a sense of reverence. I could see that the name on the tombstone was different, with the inscription reading, 32 fridges, seeming to have been pressed hard over what had originally been on it. I looked back to the grave to see it had been opened. It had been closed before, I had known it to be, yet it had opened by itself. It must have been something supernatural, for no natural occurrence could explain this away. On that day alone, the wind was a voiceless whisper and I can firmly say that there was no other man with me. I had felt a presence observing me, although not with nefarious intentions, and instead being simply primitive curiosity was what it was. It is like when the tiger toys with a prey it has not seen before how a creator toys with its creations, exerting its power and control over it. There were stairs leading down into the grave's epicenter, and I felt compelled to enter. The fridges were in there without a single doubt, which now looking back, seemed entirely insane of a thought. My rational being had been replaced with absolute spiritual intuition, even though I had not known it. Something so powerful and so pervasive had been in me that it should have killed me on the spot, while leaving my body burning to ginger ash and black coal smoke as the power would have escaped my mortal flesh. Somehow it had not. I saw the fridges lined up along the walls, 32 of them, sat as still as the earth inside this hollow temple, and waiting to be opened so their secrets be spread. Somehow, I had known the tomb of the minister had been changed, distorted and now resembled something greater. I had found myself in a king's mausoleum centuries old and filled with crumbling statues of forgotten soldiers and servants. See them and open them, cried the statues in silent agony, their animated stony features gaping at me. My hands felt so light and so weak at that moment like the skin was what remained of them, so flimsy they felt that I needed to rest myself against the wall before continuing. The earth awoke with flourish and the man from before, the one who'd told me about the fridges, he flew out of the ground like water from a geyser. He was clean and spotless for a man that had been in the ground, and he went to the center of the tomb, and seemed to kneel before it. 
You may not understand or realize what you will learn when the fridges are open. If you do, you will be given a new task, but if you don't, you will forever be searching to understand it all, forever tormented and haunted by an unforgiving knowledge of everything's existence. Spoke the man. If I do, and if I understand it all, what task would I be undertaking? I had asked the man, thinking perhaps it would be something simple, but the man was cryptic in his reply. Your task would be to awake. Whisper the man, as if he were trying not to disturb someone who'd been asleep. I had one last puzzling question for the man, I must ask you this since I may never get the chance again. Who are you and why did you choose me for this? The man stared and stared for a while, and then his face began to shift, slowly at first and then his legs and arms began to warp and elongate, becoming leeches and snakes and worms and maggots that crawled this festering rotten world, and his body fell to the floor, his head shrinking and becoming angular and sharp, his eyes becoming cold cunning slits, and fangs as sharp as a basilisk's fangs grew out like young bamboo in minutes. It hissed and said, have you forgotten who you were? Open Pandora's box and see the naked truth, for the primordial truth of this and all other worlds that are parallel to ours. All of the fridges opened at once, even though I'd only chose to open the first one I saw. I moved as if another being was inside me, someone caught between the two thin lines of reality and infinite abyss, and I staggered towards the beaming light that shined through each and every one of the fridges, so pure and blisteringly white that I closed my eyes as I felt the light entrap me. Through billions of billions of eons, through the mass singularity at the center of the universe, of all universes, through the unwavering titans of darkness consuming all light, there was another world, indescribable and utterly void, and at the center of this world of entropy and decay, there was a small being of radiant light. They looked just like me, and seemed to be asleep. Their eyes closed tight and their chest rising steadily and softly. Then, their mouth opened and outspilled new worlds, new spinning spiral galaxies and intertwining with it, life itself, a watercolor painting of vibrant existence. But, it was only a little. Soon it had all disappeared under a ghastly cosmic cloud of darkness and blight. I saw the twisting and boneless things resembling things that had died, demented and confused, they tore and screamed at nothingness as their bodies slowly became minuscule dust debris, the cycle never ending for more continued to arrive. Have you forgotten? After everything you have done? You live there in that fantasy world, and abandoned everything. Remember. Cried a voice nearest me, the voice of the man again, but he was monstrous. His body stretched beyond the horizon, his masked and corrupted self pulsated and yearned to escape its boundaries, and what remained of his eyes came spurting out darkness and constant despair. Reality is decaying around you, and still you slumber on. Please, awaken and realize your truest form. Pleaded the voice. For a moment, I felt something surge through me and into the being of light. Their eyelids began to flutter and their bodies seemed to spasm, but I felt my own mind began to unravel, feeling that power that had kept me sane through all of this, leave me be. I gripped that body and forced that energy back into my own, locking it deep in my soul, and never letting it out. In a moment, that being of light vanished, and at that same time, I heard the voice of the man scream, so harsh, and deafening that I could see the world began to fragment like my mind into bits of pieces of darkness and light, until I collapsed from it all and awoke some time later, on the street. I always try to find the fridges, but they elude me and never present themselves. I have searched every corner of my own mind, and for every sign or hint of something that could even point me towards the fridges, but it seems to be that they have never existed in the first place. You know, once I used to think this could all be corrected, but more and more, the ever-increasing throbs inside my soul that cages what I stole and the insane, distorted dreams I have at night can only remind me that I killed God. Father, please forgive me. Amen. Thanks for listening. The link to the Reddit post are in the description below. And don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.